Assalamu Assalam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you. I'm your host, Ardian Al Mahdi, and joined with me is my brother, Hussam Al Mahdi, and uh, our new guest here, um, our dear brother, Thomas Al Mahdi. How are you, Thomas? I'm good. Thank you for having me here. It's uh, great for you. To, um, yeah, no, it's actually an honor, and it's great for us that you are here with us. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a privilege. It's something that we were really looking forward to throughout yeah, the whole day. You know, we saw you on the previous show, and we yeah. were like, you know, wow, he's uh, he's really natural on camera, and it was uh, it was really a sight to behold, right? Hussam? Yeah, it was nice. It's like the the experiences you had is really mm. amazing. I remember you told us the story about yeah. the the car and the, yeah. how the bus was riding uh, away, and uh, suddenly some strange angels, two strange angels, like mm. stopped and picked you up and start chasing over the, yeah. the you know. The, the the red lights and is it crossing over red lights and you know to, to, to <laughs> just to get, get you to the bus yeah, which well. is kind of like out of this world you yeah. know like people don't do that for strangers you know they cross cool. red lines maybe he gets a ticket you know why mm, even the dream I told you the dream before and you yeah. know oh yeah the, the which is uh, so connected yeah. Right? yeah it was Avatarik that sent them it wasn't yeah. me. Even when I'm doing the show, it wasn't me speaking, you know. It was yeah. his words. He's giving me the words. Yeah. Every time I come on shows, like, viewers, I want to say, when I, like, before I do something, I ask him, I ask Ali, I ask them to just speak to me so I could speak to you all. And they are speaking to me so I could speak to you all. And Abbasadik is giving me the strength so I could speak to you all. So I want to say, thank you, Abbasadik, for this, this opportunity, for bringing something right in me that I, I didn't even know that I had. I hate speaking on TV. I hate in, uh, being in front of the crowd. And Abbasadik just see, he sees me, you know? Yeah. And he knows my talent. I don't know my talent. He knows, and he gives me the chance, and he comes, you know? Now he, he's right here with me. Maybe yes. you can't see him, but his presence is here. I feel him. His book is there. That's it. Yeah, that's he's that's speaking. speaking. <laughs> he's speaking. This whole show is about his yeah. his, uh, his words. His words, you yeah. Know, the word of God, the words of the Imam, the words of mm. the uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, that like actually inspired us and changed our minds completely. Like it just yeah. made us all completely mind blown. Yeah, and yeah. completely like pretty much we re like rewired our brains yeah. to have like a certain thought process when it comes to like handling scriptures or like handling day-to-day -day life it's yeah. it's really a book that really is a goal like he really tells you what the goal of the wise person is it's it's like if you want to reach that goal of like being a wise person or being of someone who wants to know god or attain knowing god it's like this is a book for you it's a transformative book which the likes of which does not exist anywhere it's it's absolutely, uh, absolutely incredible. And what you said, Thomas, was uh, something beautiful, and that just shows how much faith you have, and it just shows that you know uh, that God really does work like that. He works through the people. You know, His Spirit comes down upon them, and they just speak and sometimes yeah. they don't even know like hey yeah. like how did i speak like yeah, that yeah it's like you get shocked <laughs> at the words that yeah. come out of your mouth you go like wait 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 that's not me yeah, how, exactly. that, how does that work you know yeah. like who incredible. did that you know and you know that you know who did it because you asked god you asked abu sadiq you asked the, uh, the imam alayhi salatu salam to actually speak through you you know like mm -hmm. and we know that abu sadiq alayhi salatu salam says to us before you talk to people just ask uh, god to speak on your tongue so mm -hmm. like be, become yourself the vessel, you know, yeah. as you were explaining, you know, like for God's will to the and words to come out and flow and allow to touch the hearts of the people because is God uh, God's temple mm. is in the heart, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. that's true. And uh, we're saying, ask him. Why don't you all ask him? Yeah, you know, we come on the program every time we're telling you, ask him. Trust us. Trust in him. He will deliver you. He'll give you the words to do what you know. Just ask, yeah. and you shall receive. Exactly, yeah. seeking no, wise you shall find. Exactly, no wise words. It's you know that's the one thing that we've always told people on a daily basis when giving them dawah, when preaching to them, is that look, guys, if you're not convinced, you know, ask God. Uh, if you guys want to know the truth, ask God. Hey, if you need help, ask God. It's like there's always that higher being that's there that everyone says that they believe in, everyone Ooh. says that they want. Yeah. But then, okay, well. Ask him then. It's like you're the one saying, hey, I, I, I believed in him. I prayed to him. I've had sp uh, spiritual experiences. Mm. God answers my prayers. It's like, okay, well, in this case then, which is about life and death, paradise, salvation, damnation, whatever you want to call it, then how about ask about this matter now? And and my God, it's like if you're in doubt about it, Ooh. well, then, hey, pick up this amazing book. You know, it's, it's available for free on our website at theahmadireligion.org. And my God, it's like, you pick up this book and you really cannot put it down. No. 
It, it's it, it's, it's like a gateway to <laughs> yeah. a different you. Yeah, you're really much, much more educated, much more uh, like, uh, you know, uh, actually mindful, much more credible you. Yeah. Of course. Literally, you enter into this world, you enter into the... You, when you open the goal of the wise and you start to reading, read uh, in it, the idea is that it's it's it unlocks you it unlocks secrets for you it unlocks like literally puzzles that had puzzled entire scholars for the past thou and philosophers for thousands of years and he just places it in the most like easy to understand and easy to digest way that's true mm-hmm. it yes. is so simple that if i think these the concepts mm-hmm. that Abbas Sadiq, when he talks it's almost like uh, he simplified it so much that it's almost anybody can understand yeah, it from yeah. a teenager to the all the way to to an adult you know like uh, to an old man or, or a woman and that shows the genius of what yeah. we're talking about that's like it shows the holy spirit right because it cannot be eh? it cannot be that something like this happens simplicity is 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 genius right yeah. it's not if you cannot actually uh, it is said that if you cannot speak an idea in in terms of uh, simple in simple terms that even a child can understand it then you yourself don't understand it. That's, that's true, true. that's, that's very like, true it, you read this book and you know who's talking mm-hmm. it is the holy spirit There's nothing sure. else other than that. It's like putting puzzles, th- linking two things that are almost like worlds apart, yeah. you know? And yet, y- when you make that link, you go like, oh, wow. It's it's amazing. It's, it's, it's really life-changing. So we urge you, download the book. It's for free. Read it. Investigate it. It's it's like the best book you will ever pick up and read. It's, it's really going to make sense out of the Quran for you, out of the Bible, uh, out of the Torah, out of all the holy texts. This book will make sense out of them. Yeah, yeah and it's it's a beautiful book. That, and, you know, uh, Abu Saleh, back in the day before the book was fully released, you know, we were uh, actually reading it ourselves and mm-hmm. we were unlocking these great mysteries. And, you know, we used to freak out. Yeah. We used to wonder yeah. to ourselves, like, yeah. well, who could say <laughs> something like yes. this? Who can reveal this kind of knowledge and, like, make sense out of it? Yeah. You know, and, and he shows you what has been hidden in plain sight. There are many instances where, like, You read a passage in the Quran or in the Bible, you think you have an idea of it, but then he says, hey, did you notice this word? Yeah. Did you ever Ooh. think uh, wh- why this word is being used and yeah. how it applies? And then suddenly it just opens up this realm of understanding that you actually didn't understand anything. 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 Yeah. You really just thought yeah. you understood. Now, I have a question for you, brother. Mm. It's like the, when you started reading the book, how did you feel? Oh, I got goosebumps. And, uh, <laughs> you know, when I open it and start reading, it gets... You know, shivers. Yeah. yeah. You know, like you. It's experience like when you feel when you're excited about something. Yeah. And then you turn a page and you get more excited. You know? <laughs> like I don't know. To explain it, it's really hard. You yeah. gotta experience it for yourself. Let me not rob it away from you all the experience. <laughs> Go read it and experience it. But I'm telling you, every time I read it, my the hair in my hands. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Stand out. Stand out. Like, <laughs> like, like goosebumps, basically. Goosebumps, yes, exactly. Yeah, they, yeah no, it's, it's a powerful book. It's a powerful book. You know, one of the things that, uh, you know, right off the bat that like really just shoots you is like this whole thing about the tree that we went over yeah. in the previous episodes. You know, uh, who would have thought really? And also like, not only who would have thought, but who would have thought and also brought evidence and proof for that. Yeah, you know, exactly. It, it was something extraordinary. And, you know, the book, I, I mean, like each chapter has its flavor. Each yeah, chapter yeah. has its like thing that like, you know, you hear a chapter, you hear the name of the chapter. And you're like, yeah, I know exactly right. what happened in that chapter. I, I know my favorite part in that chapter. And, you know, the one thing that I love about this book so much is just how it also doesn't just point to the fact that it has amazing cool knowledge, but it also points to the fact that, hey, you know, we're living in the end times. We're living in the time in which knowledge is now coming forth to the people. And also it's pointing out who is to blame for the corruption and the uh, simple fact that this world is suffering. Who is it that we... uh, that it is to blame well it's the devil for sure it's iblis yeah but it's also the children of iblis and i think that is like one of the key things that we also take mm-hmm. from this book too is that we we have a, a cancerous like like um a tumor in society which are uh people who are the spawn of satan these mm-hmm. people who come in and they suck the wealth out of a country yeah You know, like, in, uh, even in the book, we have, um, like, a chart that shows, like, the top 10 billionaires in the world yeah. have $1.4 trillion altogether. Yeah. Well, like, a place like Poland, like, has uh, less than half 
of the wealth of these 10 rich people. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's insanity. insanity. It's, it's, it's it is insanity. Wealth, the, the wealth distribution is at mm. uh, its highest peak of, of uh, immoral, immoral immorality, really. Yeah. Because it's like uh, 1% would own 50% of like the wealth of, a, uh, of an entire exactly. you know, population. How exactly. does that even... How do, uh, how do you even justify going that far? You know, like... Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. Yeah. You can't. It's just po- not possible. So... It, they don't, you know... They, God said us here and he provide everything for each and every one of us. Yes, the book yes. says it, you know? And one, somebody, uh, one person just stealing it from each other. Stealing yeah. it from you, stealing it from you, and putting it in poverty. You know? That's yeah. why that book is there. Read it and you'll understand what Abbasad is saying. Yes, exactly. I mean, look at the th- kind of topics that Abbasad yeah. Salam revealed for us in this book. Like, he goes, the first seven chapters of mm. the book uh, are seven covenants that God has made with humanity, explaining the entirety of the human story from the beginning of Adam until today. Right, like the story of all the, uh, the, 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 the prophets who ha- God has made a direct uh, you know, contract with, yeah. you know, these prophets that because of them, even until today, the, the, the shape of the earth has been made because of them. Mm. Like people, like literally the entirety of the earth has been shaped by these, uh, by mm. these prophets that are mentioned in these seven covenants. So minimum, you'd have to respect the, the fact that he's, he's rewritten the history in a way that makes, uh, makes sense from the Quran, the Bible, the Torah, mm. and he makes out of it a, a, triolo- a tri- trilogy that, uh, yeah. that, that it's almost watching a movie, you know, like a series, you know, yeah. like a series. <laughs> of some kind you know like you he takes you through that route of like hey do you remember in the first season it was like this and mm-hmm. then by the way this happened in the second season and you go like you do you understand better now now the third season mm-hmm. do you understand better now now the now it clicks yeah, now yeah. The click, like now the picture becomes yeah, now more clear picture is like exactly you have one piece of the puzzle the second piece of the puzzle then the third piece and he puts them all in front of you in the table and it makes absolute sense. And it's challenging to read. It's not like a, gonna be like um, flowers and rainbows, you know? It's, like, it's gonna be like very dramatic because that's what a oh, human sure. being is. Uh-huh. We're dramatic be- beings. Yeah. We're not like uh, beings of like just flowers and just rainbows, right? <laughs> that's true. No, we are very complicated. Yeah. We, are, we have much uh, difficulties in, in fighting against ourselves and our egos. And this shows through the stories of the prophets and the messengers in all the holy books. Mm. Yeah, so that's it, true, it's that's true. true. And, and you know, Imam Ali from Ms. Peace had said a very famous line, which is that, you know, the truth is uh, bitter, you know, the truth yeah. is not sweet. And, and Jesus says, you know, search, uh, search until you find it. And when you find you're going to be disturbed. But once you're disturbed, you will be in awe and then you will reign over all. So, you know, as you said, the yeah. truth, man, when you read this book, you will come across things that perhaps you don't like. For example, in, in Christianity, you know, the very thought of perhaps Jesus not being the literal son of God yeah. or being part of a trinity hurts. Of course yeah. he the, hurts. Absolutely. The idea that Jesus actually didn't die for your sin and someone else replaced him, like, yeah. that destroys your idea now of like why Jesus even came. It like yeah. You start feeling like your whole life as a Christian follower was a lie. And even yeah. for the Muslims too, it's like, yeah. hey, like after the death of the prophet, like we have companions of his who actually betrayed him and usurp the rights of his successor. It's a bitter pill to swallow, but but the thing with Abu Sadiq is that when he explains it and he, when he presents a proof, mm. although it's bitter, you can't you you know you cannot deny that it's true. It's bitter, yeah. but you know for a fact it's true. You can't deny it. Yeah. By the way, shout out to the uh, to Jamil and Sirmad on their show uh, when when they were talking to you about yeah. like this matter and how you feel about like you know the, the church and how they lied to you yeah and that's true that's like and you said you were angry with them of course it's gonna make you angry yeah. you know yeah. hiding so much thing from us especially uh, the church hide uh, Mary Magdalene yeah oh, yeah, yeah for sure they erase the Paul erase from the, the book you know yeah. second uh, second season. Yeah. Paul, stop that. Wow. And that hurts me because I'm a Christian, you yeah. know, um, uh, teaching me the wrong stuff. Right. You know, that's we not were just nice. talking about yeah. the circumcision topic and how Jesus said, like, uh, mm. uh, the how, like, subhanAllah, how they changed the religion, right? Like, yeah. how they're misguiding people, these these non-working scholars, these priests and rabbis and, and, and uh, imams of 
whatever religion of Islam that is left on the face of the earth today from their sects. The idea is that mm. they, they would lie to the people to the point where the entirety of religion is shifted. Jesus Christ says, like, it is uh, it is like a dog is holy, you know, more more holy than a person who does yeah. not keep the, the, the this this law. Yeah, he, exactly. exactly. Yeah, he, he says he, it straight up like this. Yeah. yeah. And, and, the, and the disciples, they were shocked. Exactly. Like, the, the, like when he said to them, he said that a dog is actually more clean than an uncircumcised like person. person. They freaked out. They freaked out. They were like, oh, who can oh, handle what you're saying? Soul. Exactly. Yeah. He's like, what are you talking about, Jesus? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you can't say that. Then. Exactly. People can't, they won't listen to you. You'll get canceled, basically. Exactly. It's like, I, because, I mean, that's... Like, if Jesus... Like, the idea of Jesus, like, uh, for the people, like, if that kind of character... Or if Jesus was basically living in our day and age, yeah. for sure, like... Culture today would for sure cancel out Jesus. Yeah. They would say like, "Hey, this man cannot be near our children. He cannot be near our temples. Yeah. This guy is is insane. Yeah. He is saying things that are hurting people's feelings." Yeah. But but Jesus didn't care about he's people's feelings. He's not politically feelings. correct, is what yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not politically correct. He, he does not care about how you feel. He just cares about coming down with God's knowledge, with God's laws, with God's commandments, and he's going to implement it whether the people like it or not. Yeah. They have a saying that uh, the truth always hurts. Yes. And that's, that's true. true. That is true. true. You know? Yeah. So, they, so what else did they lie about then for you guys? I mean, the gene, yeah. re- reincarnation. I never knew that you could reincarnate in oh. certain ways, like the books uh, talk right, about, right. like a stone, uh, depending on how, or how you, uh, you believe yeah. and what you did in your past life. That make you uh, reincarnate to a stone, a tree. You know, it, it's yeah, yeah. really shocking to hear yeah. these things. <laughs> it really is, and you yeah. find evidence for that in the yeah. Bible, in the Quran, yeah. in the holy books too. Yeah. So it's, they really hid it in plain sight. Yeah, That's and, true. and 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 it's so weird because like even this topic about reincarnation, yeah. right? It's like, it's like it even says in the Bible clearly that okay, the Jews are waiting for Elijah to uh, to come because yeah. in the Old Testament, Elijah he goes up to paradise or he goes up to heaven, right. and he's not seen. And I think it was Prophet Malachi who basically said that Elijah would return. Yeah. So they were the Jews they were awaiting for the return of Elijah and they said that the return of Elijah marks the coming of the Messiah. So when Jesus comes they're like, "Hey, you know, where's uh, where's Elijah that was supposed to come with you?" Yeah, right. And he says, "Hey, if you guys were waiting for Elijah, well he's over there and he was pointing at John the Baptist." Mm-hmm. So, you know, like even me when I was a teenager when I first heard that and I read that, you know, cuz like I was like watching the history channel and I was watching different documentaries. Mm. Uh, on TV, and they actually talked about that line, and there are Christians who are leaning to uh, to the fact that this for sure has to deal with reincarnation, yeah. mm-hmm. and then it makes you think to yourself, as you said, because like like okay, the church, they, you know, or Christianity, yeah. like the priests and these guys, yeah. they, they basically lie to you. It's yeah. like it's it's in the script; it is there Absolutely. plainly for you to read. But then the explanation is something so ridiculous, like mm. oh, when Jesus said that's uh, that's Elijah. He meant like, okay, he came in the same power and the same kind of spirit as so Elijah. They have to yeah. add to this, to, to the yeah, like, 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 Christ. Like, yeah. like, like hold, as hold, to say, hold yeah. a thought. Hold uh, a thought. You know when, uh, as a Christian, what they, they inst- uh, the thought they put in your head yeah. that the Elijah will come back yeah. with the same body, oh, okay. and that's the, or really fooling the people. To yeah. be honest yeah. with you, as yeah. if like uh, Elijah is going to come, come back, back, like like, like a, coming down, like down from the clouds, and like exactly. and like people are now looking at him coming down. It, I mean, that's uh, yeah, a little yeah, bit like, unrealistic. This is, this is, you know what? It's so interesting because now. Uh, when you think about it, um, the Shia is Muslim. Mm. They say that the return of the Ahlul Bayt or the family of the Prophet is in that way too. Yeah. That as uh, the Imam Ali Salatu Salam, Imam Al Hussein Ali Salatu Salam, he's in his grave. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he's gonna break out of the grave. You know, like this. You know, movies, uh, yeah. zombie movies. You know, like he literally the, the earth would open for all, all of them, and so thousands of people will rise from the dead. Mm. You know, yeah. and they would cool. be they would be like uh, uh, dressed in in. I mean, what do you what do they dress you with when you? die right like white your shirt and clothes and that's it and so you imagine the scene you know like they imagine it like all of them are gonna rise from the floor and they have a sword somehow yeah you know somehow they would carry a sword and they would start fighting you know Shotguns and, yeah, exactly. and AK-47s and, and M16s tanks and, and tanks and you know. And so that's why I believe that's why the the, the, the people that believe in Christianity and uh, the Muslim piece, uh, people they because they install that memory in them that yeah. image of things. When the prophet comes, they can't they accept can't, him because exactly. they were looking for that person. Yeah. Yeah. When he's here, he's, and then Abbasadik said it in there: it's a soul. 
that's coming. You know, yeah, exactly. soul coming in a new body. Yeah. And because they don't understand this, but if they read the goal of the world, they'll get the understanding and the eyes gonna open exactly. and they're gonna see, you know? So read the uh, and also one more thing that really disturbed me uh, yeah. this um uh, the back of the base uh, six six uh, six. Yeah. Uh -uh. That is big. Yeah, that is really big. Really sure. yeah. That's one of the chapters that if you I read, uh, you have to be really open-minded about like what's going on yeah, here. You know? Exactly. Yes, because it's like a, it's a very massive revelation, in fact, and it shows yeah. the corruption, the level of corruption that has touched the Bible, yeah. right? Uh, as a book of uh, as a book of narrations. And so the idea is that it like when you. Go to this mark of the beast, and he tells you exactly how to calculate it yeah. and what it means. Oh. And you go to the depth of the. I mean, even you can you can even connect that mark of the beast with mm. like with Solomon and how much money he used to receive per, per yeah. like you know six hundred six hundred six hundred exactly. Yeah. So you can there are some some numerological connections over there, and we know that um, the Jews at that time they were very heavy on that knowledge, mm -hmm. on the knowledge of numerology, on the Kabbalah. They they have it, you know, like so they uh, they they have these sciences back then and they know what that what these things mean so you can see the link yeah. to the truth you mm -hmm. know very clearly there is a thread of truth here yeah. you know, 666 here 666 six, there six. and then then but but then they tell you it's a beast that's very bad yeah I mean, what's how, you know, it's, what's that? What's that all about? Yeah, you know, like, how does one? how yeah. does that make sense? Exactly. Now, first of all, the credibility of the collection books of the Bible is already in question. That's mm -hmm. number one. Yeah. You know, like you have For Paul sure. writing mm -hmm. majority of the of the Bible, so most of the Bible. So when Paul is not somebody who's met Jesus Christ, he's yeah. not a prophet of God. And if you believe in prophet, as when you believe in him as a prophet, then you must automatically be fair enough and believe in Muhammad as a prophet. That's true. Oh, that's it's, true. It's just like you cannot deny that fact Ooh. you know it's a fact if you believe Paul is sent by the Christ Ooh. and he is anointed by Christ and he is able to like actually change the laws of Christ which he did <laughs> um, then you should believe in Muhammad sallallahu who also changed the laws of Christ and who also told you that what yeah. you know stories that you don't like to you know like that are different than what was told to you before that's absolutely true and uh, yeah that's if the people are fair but unfortunately we know that most people when it comes to Discovering the truth or finding the truth are actually not fair to themselves and they all, everyone has uh, unfortunately uh, a biased opinion and a biased mindset and a prejudiced mindset uh, If I can say that yeah. when it comes to uh, investigating especially something like the matter of the Mahdi, you know, we get made fun of mocked ridiculed and oh. uh, and accused it's and it's a sunnah and it's so funny it's like the quran itself is like a guideline about how every time that someone comes warning the people or trying to guide people that the same thing always occur uh, always occurs mockery accusations like like making uh, being made fun of not being taken serious delays things of this nature always happens in the call uh, right. in, in the call of god, uh, of god almighty yeah, it's true. It's like, uh, it's very true. These things happen and these things are a sign also that the people are, uh, you know, that the people hate the truth. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran that the majority of them hate the truth. Mm. The truth is an attribute of God. Yeah, It's one of the 99 names of God, literally mm. one of 99 Ooh. attributes of the divine. And yet, that he's saying that the majority of the people hate the truth. They're making them feel uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. I mean, mm. God is not going to listen to you. Yeah. You're going to have to listen to him. You exactly. understand? So it's not, it's not about, you're, you cannot rule over God. Mm -hmm. He's the king. This exactly. is one of the things that terrifies uh, egos. Yeah. You know, it's the most terrifying thing for an ego is to, ha to believe that there is a God that you have to worship by obedience, direct li live obedience, right? Not yeah. like... Oh, he writes you in a book, pray five times and yeah. you go and pray five times. That's, you can get away with that, you know, pray it on your time, whatever, do whatever you need to do. Yeah. But, and, you know, which means that God, when he is on a wall as a picture, yeah. it's very easy, very nice. Very, I love God. Very, you know, yeah. we all, we all, the majority of them love, love, yeah. love that kind of That's God. You know, true. he's on the wall as a picture yeah. and you go in there, yeah. you know, and you, you worship that because that's... In your in your head, mm. that's uh, you know you'll have an image of him. You know most people, and I, and I swear this is the truth. It's like most people are amazing believers and followers and companions to someone who is not alive. Yeah. So yeah, they'll 
portray like a, like the name of Muhammad, you know, Mim yeah. Hamim Dal. Yeah. They'll pu- uh, put a portrait of Jesus. Man, they and, would cry. And cry. A portrait of Imam Al Hussein yeah. and cry and Ooh. like beat themselves yeah. and yeah. bleed. Yeah. You know, they will bleed themselves like yeah, the Shia exactly. do. So like, so like the followers for a person who is not alive, you'll find them to be the most best and the, the most devout. The people who go to the church all the time, the mosques all the time, crying over Jesus, over, uh, over Hussein. But then, when it comes to a living prophet or messenger or imam, now suddenly it's, hey, I don't like that. Hey, yeah. he's interfering in my life. Hey, I don't want to do what he told me to yeah. do. I prefer Ooh. to do this. Uh, you know, like... Complaining. Complaining. So it, it seems yeah. like, as you said, Hussein, the ego, the human self, does not want to obey something that is in control of its life and the do's and don'ts. Yeah. It, it just simply is the case. But that's, that's strange you mentioned that because uh, if a celebrity say to do something, they actually oh, don't. God, yes. yeah. Yeah. Easily, they don't even question them. People are yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, most crazy. of the time, the, celebrity, the celebrities will call you towards like buying a new thing, yeah. you know, like a shiny thing or, you know, buy yeah. a new car or buy a new clothing or buy a new per- cologne yeah. or perfume. So it's dunya stuff. You know? yeah. They will not yeah. call you towards, hey, you need to obey God. You need to obey God by like literally finding the avatar of mm. that ray that came from the source. You see, mm. and you understand, like, which is the Holy Spirit. Yeah? yeah, you have to find that from amongst all of these different sects of Christianities and denominations, you know, of Islam, and you will have to find that. And it's a difficult thing to think for yourself. Of God says in the Quran, "Afala yaqilun." Do they not become mindful? Are they yeah. not mindful? Afala yatafakkarun. Do they not think? <laughs> do they not <laughs> think? You know, أفلا يتذكرون? Do they not think? Do they not remember? أفلا يعقلون? Are they not mindful of these things? So the idea is that there is many أفلاز, many, many, uh, do they not? Yeah. Would they not? Would they not? Would they not think? Exactly. Do not think. Yeah. Do not ponder about the, the people who are before you. They did what you're doing today, which is following people who are not appointed by God, following scholars, rabbis, monks, priests, um, holy people mm. who sit down and tell you peace and love while they are not given a single atom of solution to the world problems of today. Like don't, they don't offer you the way, uh, the way out of the of this tyranny that we're inside of right yeah, that's it's, true it's, so yeah. the book comes in and he gives you a in the first seven chapters would be like a a brief history and the seventh would be the new new contract <laughs> with god now what do you think about that you know that's amazing you know giving us a new covenant because it broke it god because it, god's love us so much that he yeah. brought a new covenant for us so we could come back to him exactly you know he's Want us to come back. He's saying we are his children. So he sent Abbasadik to bring us back. And Abbasadik in the book, he pointed all the lies and the corruption in the other books. Yeah. And he, he corrected in this book. Yeah. And yeah. there's more to come. I'll show you will bring more. I can't oh, wait for, for that. Sure. <laughs> for sure. But this book had... For it's sure. I mean, look at Abu Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam. He wrote this book and he wrote the manifesto, yeah. the Mahdi's manifesto, which is a book, two, bo- uh, two books you can download for free uh, in multiple languages and more languages are coming uh, online on our website. So the idea is that you can download this book for free and th- this book is packed full of, of revelations about mm-hmm. uh, the truth, about like what happened, about the corruption of the land, about who's corrupting the land, about w- what's going on exactly with the financial system and economic. Yeah system what's going on with satan where is satan exactly what is satan doing exactly come on you know it seems like in all the other religions satan is just like he's just the opposite of who i am that's it you know it's just like he's out there somewhere anything that's not me but the idea is what is he doing exactly what exactly is he doing abu sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam exposed satan and 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 his and his uh, minions and his children through the uh, the first (laughs) first chapters when he (laughs) said that it's a lineage it yeah. is. It's a bloodline. I didn't even it know that. It is literally a lineage, you know. Until can you imagine? Book. Can you imagine the psychopaths of the world? You yeah. Imagine the sociopaths of the world. You see, you imagine this narcissistic people who are self-indulged, oh, and you yeah. will never change their mind. And you would see a glimpse of what Abu Sadiq is telling you. And the more you read, the more the more you start to see the world in that way, and you go like this. This is the only thing that makes sense. Yeah. This is the only thing that makes sense. No, and, and, and I swear to God, it is the truth that once you realize the truth, no matter how bitter it is, mm. once you go back outside and interact with the people, 
you really start seeing things differently and you start seeing like wow like you know the interactions that you see like on your day-to-day life when yeah. you're outside now it's like wow like it makes sense now yeah why it is that people are stealing why it yeah. is that people are murdering yeah. Yeah. why it is that this guy for some reason wants to come and harm me it's like because it's innate in them it's just that they get a thrill they get joy out of causing suffering to other human beings as long as they're happy as long as they're the ones pleased and you're the one who's displeased or hurting or like not feeling good like they're happy then yeah, of course. but like that's a sadistic nature that, that only comes sadistic. from someone like satan and exactly. his seed yeah exactly so you have then these seven uh, seven covenants and then you have topics like celestial that's bodies right. Yeah. How, uh, how intense is that chapter? That's really that intense. Really that is amazing. 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 That makes you see the planets in a completely different light. That's yeah. true. That's true. For for a long period of my life, I looked at planets as just rotating stars. Yes. You know, just, they're just like floating in the air and there is... Mm. But you don't understand it. You don't know because nobody teaches you about it. I mean, mm. when you go to the scientists, they'll teach mm. you what? They'll teach you, oh, this planet is this size. Yeah. The size of the planet is this big. And its diameter is this. And its radius is this, and it's made of this kind of uh, iron metals or these Ooh. metals, and has the majority gases that are in the atmosphere, and it's about this much distance from us. They teach you just the, what meets the eye, but it's as if like they remove the spirituality yeah. of, of or the consciousness of of, of existence, right? Like we we are conscious. Of we course. see other animals are conscious. We see beings are conscious. Yeah. So. Where did they disconnect that planets are conscious? How did they just say, oh, it's just the Earth. It's just a floor. It's just a big rock floor. It's just a rock. It's just a rock. It's just a rock. What do you mean it's just a rock? It's an entire ecosystem. Exactly. It's inside is moving. It's outside is moving. It's Mm. like there's an electrical magnetic field around it. There's auras. There is like, (laughs) there is literally flowing bloodlines and like all kinds of trees. It's hair, you know, like of the planet. (laughs) All kinds of things that you could could compare to a human body and you'll think that, okay, these are all there. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. Exactly. so, So then where... How did, when Abu Sadiq comes in this chapter and explains what celestial bodies and inshallah will in the future go into deep, uh, deep mm-hmm. points about that, you start to see existence as like, wow, there are so many beings I can't see, but they're right there. Even on Earth, yeah. Even oh on Earth, God, they yes. talk about they have that uh, that beast that took that leader to our next planet. Yeah, you remember that? That's a, such an amazing oh, story for me. Yeah, that's one of my best stories yes. there, man. Yeah, you should read that. Let, let us just spoil it to you. Go ahead and read that story, <laughs> and you'll see what we're talking about. And you, just like how you put a smile on our face now. And read it, you'll yeah. put the same smile. Yeah, for I'm sure. You. It'll make you think, it'll make you contemplate, yeah. it'll make you see the reality that we are inside of today is much deeper than what the scholars tell us it is. It's much more mm-hmm. it's much more fascinating, it's much more tasty to, to actually like see and to like be a part of and it makes you actually want to get up and save people you know that mm. and change it into a garden of Eden you know which is again mm. one of the chapters of Abbas yeah, Al-Khalil exactly. right? yeah. you know he says this earth it, it's uh, God didn't intend for it to look like this definitely not yeah how intense he's like what I mean what does God want for this earth Yeah, and and that's a beautiful thing about this book too. And my God, I've been saying it throughout the whole yeah. uh, uh, throughout the whole <laughs> show. But like, you know, one thing is that it's not it's not just a book of like tales and like really cool information, but it's a book that like actually shows you how to practically use it, or like how society would be if mm-hmm. it was practically up, uh, yeah. applied. And my God, if if the people really took this serious and they took the messenger of God in this day and age of Al-Sadiq seriously, the Mahdi. We would be living in what uh, what we would describe in the book. Uh, I believe it is door number thirty three as a divine just state. And that yeah. chapter, like it's it's actually one of my favorite chapters due to the fact that it t- is telling you about the future of humanity, yeah. Yeah. where we're trying to lead humanity to, and what it will become in the near future, a state or a world in which there is uh, justice and equity after it had been filled and plagued with injustice and corruption. Mm-hmm. And my God, it's... Uh, yes, it's, it's, the it's divine just, justice state is, uh-huh. is something that... Uh, divine justice state is like literally... It's the concept of concepts. Mm. Yeah. Because 
if That's there what we're is no for. such a, I mean, I mean, if you imagine it, right? We're thinking it, therefore God has must have at some point thought about this, Of right? course. Like, <laughs> because it's a possible, there, yeah. I, I, like, it's not possible for me to think something God didn't think about yeah. before, you know? Even yeah. say that in the book. It, right, even yeah. this thought right yeah. now that I just said, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not possible for him to have not thought this thought before me, you know? Which is that God ha- must have thought everything. He, he, yeah. he is no, he's the all-knowing, right? All-knower. So how can he be all-knower when I can think a thought that he didn't think before? Exactly. You see? Mm. It's, like a, it's like a kind of a checkmate. Like everything you think is, is something that's already there. The mm. idea is, there is, which is a concept that there is no original mm-hmm. idea. Exactly. Right? All ideas are kind of like in a, in a, in a space that mm-hmm. everybody can access to. Now, what is the best idea to access when it comes to justice? Hmm. What is it? We have we end up with two rules with two things, two options. Yeah. The rule of man versus the rule oh, of God. God. The supremacy of God versus the supremacy of man. That's it. Yeah, you that's either it. have human okay. beings choose what rules them, yeah. or you have God r- choosing who rules you. This is literally if you take all the politics of the whole world mm-hmm. and you narrow it down, it this is what you end up to. That's and that exactly. is the case. No, that is exactly the case. And you know, most of the people, even uh, even tyrants who like have their seat in power because of like some dynasty. Well, that dynasty came up. Why? Because somebody uh, from the human beings years ago placed that family in power. They're the ones who had accepted that this yeah. family rule, mm-hmm. whether it's the House of Saud or the uh, or, or or the Kingdom of uh, Jordan and their royal family, or uh, or any of these other royal families or like monarchs that exist today, it is all because the people allowed them to be in power. And that's actually the reason why the Middle East is in the state in which it is today. It's because the people allowed that someone besides God rules over them. It is the people that allowed that someone not appointed by God rules over them. And because of that, we suffer. Otherwise, if God, who is supposed to be a loving father in the sense of like what a real father is, Mm -hmm. a loving God, a merciful God, a God who is all-encompassing in knowledge, if we allow that God to rule, well then where can we go wrong? Where can we go wrong? Can you reveal knowledge that we don't know, you know? You bring, heal the sick, you know? As it says in the book, Abba Sadiq even gives some of the... uh, the uh, meta cures. the cures yeah. for certain yeah. disease. Mm-hmm. Hair loss. I'm losing my hair actually. Yeah. I was like, uh, give the cure. Yeah, 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 you the cure. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. You know? yes, sir. It's amazing. Even memories. Even you have a chapter about memories in the book. The reality mm. of memories, dreams. Everything is there. Yeah. It's there for you. All what you have to do is just pick it up, download it, and your phone. You use a phone every day, every yes. minute, every second. You have your phone in hand. Just read the thing. Yeah, you could either use a phone to like scroll through TikTok yeah, and Instagram exactly. or like YouTube Shorts, or like you could actually use it to yeah. read a book that is going to change your life forever. I mean, I, I, and if you can't I mean, read. On. Uh, we are here for you. We are. We have an entire show dedicated called "The Goal of the Wise." We, mm. me, and brother Ardia, uh, Ardian, and inshallah, uh, as we take guests more, and inshallah, we'll have more. That we go through each chapter one by one in detail, and we try to explore. Mm-hmm. The goal it's of a the lot wise. to unpack. It is so much to unpack. We're not going to be able to completely give you everything. That's yeah. why, but we will give you definitely the gist of it. We will with you together. We will walk with Abu Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam as he walks us towards the truth, you know, like, and he gives us these, uh, this information that actually is mind changing, mind altering. It's like yeah. mind bending. It's it mind blowing. It it exactly. It's, uh, so that's the idea is like, well, we talked about the divine justice state. And I think that this chapter is one of the most important chapters because it links also to the manifesto of the yeah. book, the book of the manifesto of Abu Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam. So you would read this chapter and you would have a general concept of what it is that you know you're uh, mm. you're looking for when we say the divine justice state. What do we mean by that? We mean that God is the king, and He appoints a ruler, a king, a uh, a philosopher king, if you may, that rules with justice in the land. And what is justice? As I don't know if you guys read. 
the Republic, mm. the Republic by Plato. Yeah. Uh, the he said that justice, uh, Socrates, basically end up. The, the whole book is about trying to discover what the definition of justice is. Because yeah. even if you go to any court of law right now today, no matter yeah. where in what country, and you ask them what is justice, and you will find a huge discussion about what it is. You yeah. know? Like, and they would have the Republic book, and they would have studied these books of course. in the court of law. You know, in mm. an actual official court of law, this is what they study in order to try to understand what it means. Yeah. And in the end, you'll find that justice is placing a thing in its right so, place. Exactly. So, who now, oh, if we're going to go with the supremacy of mm. man, is that even possible? Well, no. People don't even agree what the right place for things yeah, are. Exactly. You know, like yeah, the rich people true. think that the, it is right for them to have that one, you know, that 50% of the wealth of a human yeah. being. Because they're smart. They're smarter than everyone else, and they're just businessmen. They're just doing a big, good deal, you know. Like, okay, I give you this, you give me your money, yeah, and I keep it. I'm not gonna give it back. It's mine. Yeah, so I don't care if you start. Yeah, I don't okay, care exactly. if you start. It's not my fault. You're stupid. And you're you know? doing all the work. Exactly. It's, uh, I'm, I'm sitting there for 90 <laughs> hours every week, yeah. uh, filing paperwork and exactly. talking to this person and talking to that person. But like now it like kind of gives me a perspective of like anybody with that mindset, what you're really doing and what you're really saying is that I'm really just working really, really hard to make sure that I take away your money, yeah. that I take away the food from your mouth. Because like, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> that's the, 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 in America, I'm happy, I remember that's... in Chicago, right? In mm. Chicago, I used to walk down the streets and, uh, and talk to some people, you know, like Chicago is known for like, having rich people yeah. living in there and working there, you know. So the idea is that they would tell you straight in your face that mm. uh, when you walk right next to a homeless person, you go like, hey, what do, what do you think about this? You know, they'll tell you straight up, these are economic losers. Yeah. They would look at another human being and with all coldness and empty emptiness of empathy, they would say, that's just an economic loser. He doesn't know how to do it. He's just stupid. That's a bully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just stupid and he deserves where he is. Now, can you that's imagine the, this is the level that we have to yeah. fix right now? That's a mad. You know, that's what we have to fix. Yeah. Uh, how, you know, this is, this is why the, the problem is so big. <laughs> yeah. Thomas, the problem is so big that if it's not for a divinely appointed king, uh, like supported by the Holy Spirit, giving us these experiences, talking on our tongues and helping us, right? Yeah. Then how how are we going to do it? It's just not possible. Yeah, for it sure. It has to be divine enforcement. It ha you have to be. And, you know, Jesus tried enforcing that, too, in his lifetime, you know, like, you know, you can cry and, like, love Jesus all you want while he's not alive, but then when, I mean, I mean, while he's, uh, like, not alive, but when he's alive, it becomes difficult because now you have a man coming yeah. to Jesus yeah. saying, hey, Master, you know, yeah. like, teach me, I want to learn everything, I want eternal yeah. life, I want, to paradise. Uh, I want paradise, right? Jesus is like, okay, well, if you want paradise, you know, do me this really big favor, you're a rich guy, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I want you to take all of your wealth, all of your amazing, beautiful possessions, sell them, distribute them, give them to the poor, and then follow me. So, and Jesus said, because after the rich man wasn't able to do, uh, to do it, he turns to his disciples and he says, oh, guys, look, see, it's easier for a camel to go in through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So in reality, what Jesus is actually saying is that it's the rich people actually who are the real losers. Yes. Because now all of their deeds in which they hoarded their wealth, while that wealth could have been distributed to feed people and save their lives instead of having them die from starvation, all of the, all, like, they're basically being, uh, they're going to be held accountable for murder and starving out people, and therefore God will judge them and the punishment will be placed on them, and at the end of the day, they're the real losers. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, by God, yeah, by God. Even if they're not, if they don't believe in God. They believe just this world is what it is. Yeah. Well, this world is ruled by law. Yeah, especially the law of it. karma. Exactly. Yeah. So now, law, these laws are gonna come back and bite you. Of course, yes. and it's, it's gonna not like gonna be able yeah. to like just let you go. The matrix is not gonna let you go. The matrix is programmed to judge you. So, and, and it's a pretty much good a prosecutor angel. Yeah, it really, you know? it really, really is. <laughs> so, so that's the idea. Is like, I think like we have pitched the book for you. You can download the book for free. It is uh, one of the most amazing yeah. books you will read. And I, it, like, we loved having you yeah, here. Yeah, it was really you. fun, God actually. God bless you. Yeah, Thank your you so insights were beautiful yeah. and uh, you really spoke from the heart I felt and everything that you said for, like for me was like a reflection of everything that Abu Sag has said in the yeah. Gold Why is like That's I was true. paying so close attention I was like wow he's he's like really picking up on like these <laughs> yeah, key moments details, of, yes. yeah and what, any last uh, like advice you want to give to the people who are listening 
And what I will say to you, pick up the book. You understand what's happening in the world. He'll teach you. And he'll show you the way. By picking up that book and read the book, when you look at uh, what people are in the world, you'll see exactly what the book is saying. And you'll, you'll understand things that you can't understand nowhere else and know how, except by reading that book. That well book said. is the key book. That's the book of the time. Please pick up that book and read it. And if you have a question, we are always here to help. Yeah. That's true. God bless you, Thomas, and thank, thank you. you so much for having us. It was a pleasure. It was amazing having you on the show, and hopefully maybe one day we'll have you back here. Who yeah. knows? We'll see what the yeah, future holds. Yeah. It's always a pleasure to be with you all. Yeah. Thank, thank you, man. The pleasure thank is you. ours. Anyway, that's a wrap, and hopefully we'll see you in the next episode. Peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.